Hello everyone and welcome back to Creation Myths. Today I have a short one for you. It's very simple, it's very easy, but it's really important that you stay until the very end of the video. There's a really, really fun addendum to this one that I don't want you to miss. So remember, stay to the very end for this one. Today's creation myth is the myth that evolutionists don't rebut creationist papers. That's what we're gonna talk about today. And I promise you, it's not gonna take very long to deal with this one. The background here is that every so often, creationists do actually publish a real peer-reviewed paper. We're not talking about papers in their fake journals like the Answers Research Journal or Biocomplexity from Discovery Institute. Those are fake journals. Those are blogs that are LARPing as journals. I'm talking about the real peer-reviewed literature. Creationists do occasionally publish some kind of scientific paper that actually goes through a legitimate peer review process. Some notable examples of this are uh, Douglas Axe from 2004 on protein folding, kind of an early paper in the waiting time problem discourse. We've got uh, Behe and Snoke from 2004. This was kind of heralded by Discovery Institute as an intelligent design paper and played a, you know, I'll say a prominent role in the Dover trial. And you've got uh, the waiting time problem from John Sanford et al. in 2015. You have Sanford again in 2018 talking about Fisher's fundamental theorem. And then Hosger et al. in 2021 again talking about the waiting time problem. This is not uh, a complete sampling of the creationist papers that appear in the real peer-reviewed literature, but it's kind of a representative sample of the things that have been published over the last 20 years or so. The creationist claim surrounding these is separate from the content of the papers themselves. It's kind of a higher order thing. So what we're talking about here is that when creationists talk about these papers, they'll often say that evolutionists either don't or haven't responded to these creationist papers in the form of their own peer-reviewed pieces to rebut them directly. So independent of the merit of the creationist paper or the critique, you, the evolutionists, have no right to be critical because the responses are themselves not in the peer-reviewed literature. Basically, creationists are saying, hey, you know, these peer-reviewed papers are up here. If you're going to respond down here with a blog post or YouTube video or whatever, that doesn't meet the same standard, so we can just dismiss that critique entirely. And basically, this is often used as a lazy way to just brush aside the criticism without having to consider the criticism on its merits, right? That's what, that's kind of the trick that creationists do here when we're talking about these actual peer-reviewed creationist papers. The reason creationists are wrong about this is extremely simple. The reason is that real biologists have responded to these papers with real peer-reviewed papers. There are actually many examples of biologists responding to the creationist papers. Here is a non-exhaustive list of some examples. You've got Michael Lynch in 2005. You have uh, Joanna Maisel in 2000, also in 2005. You have Durrett and Schmidt from 2008. You have, uh, what is this? This is Dryden et al. from 2008. And uh, Lynch again in 2010. These are responding to those earlier ones that I showed you. Um, most of these have to do with Behe and Snoke. I think one of them has to do with Axe 2004. Um, but like to say nobody has responded to like Behe and Snoke, for example, is just silly. Like people have clearly responded to it. And this is again, the strategy that creationists use here. Um, but clearly it's wrong. There are actual peer reviewed responses in the literature to the creationist papers in the literature. And it's not really more complicated than that. To summarize, very briefly, the already brief thing that we just talked about, creationists do occasionally publish genuine peer-reviewed papers. They then use the peer-reviewed status of those papers to ignore criticisms. They basically argue if the response isn't peer-reviewed, we can ignore it. Now first, that's not how critiques work. Like, you have to engage with the critique on its own merits. You can't just say, well, that doesn't count because it's not peer-reviewed. Right? No, the critique is still something you have to deal with. It's still out there in the world. And if it's valid, it's valid. The medium doesn't actually matter for that question. But also, there have been many peer-reviewed responses to creationist papers. Creationists 
just like to pretend they don't exist so they can keep putting their peer-reviewed papers on a pedestal and say, ta-da, look at this, nobody has rebutted these. But of course that is false, and you all, my audience, should know that that is false. This has been a brief discussion. Remember, we're not done. Stay till the very end. This has been a brief discussion of the creation myth that evolutionists don't rebut creationist papers. As we just saw, that is a creation myth. That is false. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like this video, hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed, leave a comment, share it around, and stick around for just one more thing, because there's one more thing to talk about and in order to show you, I have to be bigger. Because what I just told you is actually not the whole story. That's right, we published a paper. Thanks for watching.